All right, uh, welcome to EIPIP meeting 48. I just have shared agenda in chat. Uh, the first item listed here is EIP bot. Uh, so as we know that uh, there has been a lot of work going on on EIP bot side. Um, in the last meeting, we discussed some of the uh, working of different bots to be documented. And I have also added some of the items which were picked from the uh, Discord discussions. So uh, let's start with the update if there are any on the working of different bots. Um, Shashank, would you like to take this one? Yeah, I'm audible. Feeble, can you be a little closer? Very, 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 very quiet. How is it now? Better. Okay. A little better? Okay. Yeah. Uh, not sure I'm having trouble with my mic, I guess. Um, yeah, so I identified that there are two bots, basically one that uh, uh, Lightland built, Matt built, and then the other one was the the one that Alita built. Uh, as far as I'm aware, there is no third bot, I guess. Uh, so just a second. Can you hear me, guys? We can, but there are some disturbances, yeah. You're, you're cutting in and out, like you have maybe an oscillating fan or something that's going in and out. Is it fine now? Oh my god. Yes. Yeah, yeah give, me, give me one second, I'll just, I'll just run back. So I think we have two bots here for sure. But I was wondering, like, there was then a third bot. One I can see is like EIP bot, and other one is like uh, which GitHub Actions bot, right? Uh, yeah, so we got the GitHub Actions. We, we got a bunch of bots. Uh, there's like the Greeter bot. There's the Merge bot. There's the Validator bot. And there's the old Validator bot, and I think there's one or two more. Mm -hmm. So I think the greater bot is the same as GitHub action bots. I just read the name over there on the issues and pull requests that were mentioned earlier. Several of them use GitHub actions, uh, but I believe they are separate oh, things. Like GitHub it. actions is a, a kind of a tool suite and you can set up a number of different bots that utilize that. And so the greeter is run by GitHub action. The uh, merge bot is also run by GitHub Actions. The validator is not, it is run by Travis CI. Got it. I think Shashank is back. I hope it's fine now. Maybe I should speak a little louder. Much better. Much better, right? Yeah, so I identified that there are two bots, one written by Matt and the other one was written by Alita. Uh, so I'm currently going through the bots. I could, I didn't get time because I didn't have, uh, my health wasn't, pro uh, I kind of got COVID and I got sick, so I didn't get time to uh, go through the entire code. Uh, but I've been able to identify how the bots are being triggered, exactly when they are being triggered. So I've been kind of making uh, small notes here and there so that I basically first understand what's exactly going on. But like there are a couple of things uh, as to uh, uh, like how are these EIP editors being assigned for, for specific uh, uh, for specific reviews and like how the reviews are happening for each EIP or, or the or the issues or uh, you know uh, uh, PRs that are being submitted that I'm still trying to figure out. Um, so uh, that part, so that that's that that's the part that I have a little bit of bottleneck to kind of understand like exactly how is that process being defined. Uh, yeah. So I can answer the question of how are EIP, how are editors assigned. Um, there's a file somewhere um, that just has a list of the different EIP types. So you have ERCs and uh, core EIPs and uh, informational EIPs. Mm -hmm. And there's a file that says, these are the editors that should be mentioned if it's uh, ERC. These are the editors that should be mentioned if it's a uh, core EIP. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to find it right now, I believe. Oh, there it is. So it is in this file. Um, so that uh, lines 19 through 26, or sorry, uh, 21 through 26. Yeah, it's easy. Be like... Got it. Got it. Okay, makes sense. 
and then I don't know how the bot reads that, but it's basically just passed into the auto merge bot. So like it's one, uh, a set of environment variables, I think, that get passed to the Yeah, the, so those are basically, bot. yep, yep. So these are basically the usernames of the, uh, uh, sorry, GitHub usernames of the individual EIP editors, as far as I understand. Yeah. Okay, got it. And and how is the review process happening? Like, uh, so let's say if I submit an EIP, um, uh, which is like in pre-draft, let's just call it pre-draft because it's not submitted. So uh, as soon as, as soon as it's ready to merge or like being pushed into the EIP repository, like how, how is that process? Defend, uh, does the reviewer have to, yeah, sorry, good. So as soon as you submit a PR to the repository, the bot will see it. And assuming the bot can figure out whether it's a query, like assuming it's formed well enough that the bot can identify whether it's a query IP or an ERC or whatever, then the bot will mention the appropriate set of editors. And then one of them will, at their earliest convenience, um, review it, give you feedback. And then once everything's good, then it will get auto merged or rather then the editor will approve the PR and then the that point. And after that, it's directly, uh, uh, it also is being submitted on the eips.ethereum. Uh, the, the EIP's web uh, yes. subdomain, right? Yeah, got it, got it. Yeah, so as soon as it's merged, then it's it, basically every EIP that's in the repository, it shows up there. Uh, minor exception, I think. Uh, I don't know if we ever got rid of stagnant from the EIP site. I think they still show up on the EIP site, but maybe they're not in the list or something. Okay. And are there were there any edge cases in the past, or were there any are there any specific that have to be uh, you know kind of remembered uh, when working with the board, especially regarding the EIPs? Uh, there should so everything that's a problem with the bot should be filed in for the merge bot at least. It, we've had a lot of trouble. At least been working on it. Uh, we keep trying different things, try to fix it, and they keep mm -hmm. having problems. The EIP bot repository should have a number of issues that is where we track like all the little problems. Okay. Like. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. So Ethereum slash EIP bot, and then if you look through the issues, it's like there's only a few left. Uh, so yeah, I think a bug, a feature, and uh, an unknown. Yeah, I think there's one persistent issue that uh, we are having with Greg, I guess. They get, uh, Greg's username has been defined, and I think that specific bug hasn't been, you know, uh, reproduced again. Uh, so I'll, I'll keep an eye on it because I, I haven't seen that bug being reproduced. Uh, so basically that bug was, uh, I think, uh, Micah, you yourself pointed that out that Greg was being showed as the first time contributor. And uh, so maybe that was the bug, I guess, but I haven't seen that bug in the wild again. So, but I'll keep an eye on it. Referring to, I've forgotten. If you can find it, uh, send me a link. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll send it. Just to... Yeah, I think that was a long back issue and I am hoping that that must have been fixed by now because uh, Greg is already added as an EAP editor. So possibly Bud would not recognize him at least as a new contributor and that should not reappear. But yes. other than Oh yeah, that one. I, th I think Alita fixed that one. Yep, yep. Yeah, and other than that, there are a couple of more open issues. I have shared the link here in the chat, so you know you can visit that, and uh, you can also look into the history of earlier bugs. Those were fixed by Alita, and maybe it will help you understand what kind of issues are generally faced by these working of the bots. Yeah, and for and for the validator, so those issues are all related to the merge bot. Uh, for the validator bot, there's definitely lots of room for improvement. There's a number of things that I manually review that could easily be validated, like making sure the discussion to link goes to Ethereum magicians and making sure that the uh, EIPs that are dependencies of the IP in question are in the appropriate state to be dependencies. You shouldn't have like a final EIP should not depend on a draft EIP. And so that's something that bot could very easily say, hey, this can't be merged until you move those other ones forward first. Um, circular dependencies, another one. You can't have EIP five depend on four and four depend on five. It's got to go one way. 
Mm -hmm. um, lots of little things like that. Uh, so if, if someone has a hang in, has a desire to work in Rust, <laughs> then um, the validator definitely has room for improvement. Um, yeah, I mean, I have, there, there's this one open issue that I like to pick it up because I couldn't find time earlier because I got sick. So I'll pick it up and also try to get into that part. Um, so my current process to understand the bots and all the, like anything that wherever, any information that I can find, uh, I can find us reading the code, understanding the YAML file. Context as to why the specific merge happened or like you know, like why this change was introduced. So, so that kind of helps, but yeah, it's kind of taking a bit of time. Um, uh, but yeah, like most of the, like the, the core aspect of like how the workflow is happening and stuff like that, that I kind of understand. Uh, but yeah, like there are a couple of things that are still being done manually, although the bot was supposed to do, provided that bot already had that, like the auto merge sometimes doesn't happen. Like you have to uh, close and reopen the issue to uh, make it automated or something like that. So uh, I'm, I'm, I might have to talk to Alita once. Uh, regarding yeah, Alita that. has been fighting. Yeah, Alita has been fighting with the auto merge sometimes not working um, for like three months. We tried like three or four different tools, tool suites. Um, she's optimistic, but I think also at the same time has a good dose of reality behind her that the newest one, Kodiak, will work more reliably. So we'll see. We, ju we just got that one set up. All right, makes sense. Um, other than that, I think, yeah. Other than that, it's fine. Uh, so hopefully by the end of the week, I should have a bit of like a small document so that like anybody can, who wants to pick up a EIP bot issue can kind of understand like what's happening exactly. Uh, at least the workflow part, maybe not the entire details, because it just take <clears throat> a lot of context to understand. Um, um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. I think it's going to be a, a learning curve for everyone joining here for the first time because Alita has actually contributed in building the bot, so she has a better understanding of it. And uh, with some of the documentation and maybe looking into the process flow would be easier for new people to join in and start contributing more. Well, I appreciate you working on documenting some of those stuff. That could be very helpful. Thank you. Some of the next sub items that I have added here is like GitHub action bots greeting pull requests. Uh, it was mentioned by my call on the Discord. Uh, and I remember that in one of the EIP IP meeting we discussed, we should have a greeter bot for uh, kind of uh, letting people know who are creating the issue for, uh, for the first time, even if it is not for the first time, even if it is just for like, you know, um, they, they showed up and they are trying to create an issue on EIP GitHub and that is related to general EIP discussion. They should be uh, moved to the fellowship of Ethereum magician. It looks like uh, the fix uh, that uh, Alita worked actually accidentally uh, uh, triggered for both pull request and the issues. So that looks like a small fix and we might want to deactivate that. Just uh, just close that, that uh, the greeters bot get activated only for the issue section, not for the pull request. Uh, is my understanding correct, Micah? That was the concern here. That is what I thought we agreed to, but I also forget many things. So if that is not accurate, can someone please correct me? Based on this statement that the bot is uh, reflecting, it uh, appears to be that way because it says that if this issue was created as a discussion too. So that, uh, I, mean, I mean, my understanding is it is mostly for the issue section. Um, definitely would like to go back and check. And if that is correct, then we can just have a small fix here to get this deactivated so that workflow sure. currently runs for both the issue and the pull request right but it has to be just for issues not for pull request um 
Okay, so what would be the reasoning for not having the greeting message for the um, pull request? Like because, in gen, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Because that message uh, simply states that if you are creating this discussion to uh, this issue for discussion to for an EIP, please create a thread for fellowship of Ethereum magician. And that's just a simple one liner message. And it has nothing to do with the, the pull request. Um, okay, makes sense. Um, but more, would, more generally, yeah. we, we don't have a problem with people incorrectly submitting pull requests. We do have a problem with people incorrectly submitting issues. Got it. Does the bot actually catch that as like a, a failed uh, issue in the PRs? What do you mean? Like if somebody puts a link in the discussions to, to a GitHub issue, does it flag it as an invalid? Oh, no, uh, no, that is something that would be great if someone wants to take up. Uh, if you if you love Rust, <laughs> uh, the validator bot is written in Rust and it could be a, should be an easy thing to add. So by validator bot, you mean the one that is run by uh, Matt right now, like the EIPV? Or is it a different one on I don't know who runs it. It is was written by, the most recent version of it was written by Matt. Do you know okay. who runs it? Matt? No, um, what I meant by that, like these issues, we can probably go and create issues over there and then start sharing the link for people to come forward and uh, work on those issues. I just wanted to make sure where do we want to create these issues. Uh, validation things I would assume would go on the EAP validator repository and uh, things with the auto merger and the greeter and things, everything else should probably go in the EAP bot repository. At some point in the future, it would be nice perhaps if those were consolidated, um, but at least for now, that seems to make the most sense to me. That make a lot of sense. All right. So uh, moving on, uh, the last item here was issue with the auto merger bot. Uh, I, I, I suppose Alita is looking for any alternate proposal. And as Micah also mentioned earlier, that if someone has any suggestion, merger bot is something that people are struggling with. If you can help with that, uh, please reach out to us, anyone on the Discord, the API editors or the cat headers team. The next item here is the state of uh, execution specs and uh, an introduction to the core proposal for an introduction to the proposal for core EIP standardization process. So as we know that this is not a new item for the EIP IP meeting as the execution specs repository itself is the result of a discussion in the past EIP IP meetings. At present, uh, the Quill team is working on documenting specs for execution clients, I suppose in Python. And uh, the cat herders always want to support the work and communicate it to the rest of the community. So we hope to have Sam Wilson talking about the updates and uh, also based on the progress, maybe we can start discussing an alternate approach for the standardization of core EIP. Uh, so Sam, if you would like to speak uh, sure. for it. Um, how's, my, how's my audio? Is it all right? I'm using a different headset today. Perfect. Okay, cool. You sound so, as beautiful as always. <laughs> Backhanded compliments. Um, all right, so uh, I don't know where you guys are, like how, how closely everybody's been following the execution specs, but it's basically just a Python re-implementation of the yellow paper. Um, Peter and Voith have just put up the PR for uh, Spurious Dragon. So we're slowly but surely catching up to mainnet. Um, yeah, I mean, the documentation tools are pretty neat. You can go take a look at them. Um, I'm not sure what kind of an update you're looking for in the actual progress. Um, but yeah, we're, we're getting there. Um, as for the actual proposal for how we're going to do EIPs in the future, um, there is the PPNEEP um, video that probably goes over most of it. Uh, the short form is I'd like to replace the specification section for core EIPs with a diff into um, the execution specs repository and then we can collect all of the eips as uh like markdown files inside that repository and that way we one kind of get to separate ercs from eips which i think michael would probably appreciate and uh yes. <laughs> and we also get like a bit of documentation that goes along with each code change in the same repository and i think that's going to make it a lot nicer for uh 
for following along when you're implementing a client. Thank you. Um, with the updates, I was just uh, like wondering, like we should keep people uh, updated on how far along we are. As you mentioned, that spurious drag and uh, protocols are already up. That's really a good progress. We have a few more upgrades to catch up to. <laughs> just a few. Yeah, not that. So that is nice to know. And um, about this, uh, the new proposal, uh, I have shared the link in the chat for people who may have missed it. Uh, but uh, it would be interesting to hear more thoughts on it. I know Micah and uh, many other are very much interested into having a separate process. So it would be interesting to learn about what are the prep work that we can do, like Catherine can support with to just bring this proposal to the community and maybe actually help out uh, in uh, using this for, not for the merge, of course, <laughs> after merge, whatever, if it is Shanghai or whatever it is. If, if there is any thought on that. Uh, I mean, I think coming up with how we want EIPs to look like when they're incorporated into that repository would be a great step. Like, uh, and also there's like porting Speed old- underground. <laughs> well, you just don't want any <laughs> English description whatsoever. You just want Python. That's right. <laughs> English language has been failing me for the last 40 years. I'm done with it. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll migrate off that. Uh, if you're a LodgeBand fan, then we, we can use that. Um, <laughs> okay. But yeah, so I, I think, uh, yeah, that would be a great start. It's just playing around with ideas for how we want EAPs to look and what kind of structure we want for them. Um, obviously thinking about how the bots are gonna have to change to enforce um, whatever constraints we want on the, uh, the new repository. Um, yeah, and, and obviously just like socializing the idea of changing where we look for EAPs. Um, and maybe getting feedback from core devs on, you know, do they think it's useful? Do they think, cause like, I think we're far enough along in the specs project that you can look at it and be like, this is a good idea, or this is not useful as a core dev. And I think we should start getting that kind of feedback as soon as we can. Um, yeah, those are kind of my thoughts do, on it. If someone wanted to, let's say we live in the future and all we have is the specs repo and someone heard about EIP, I don't know, 151 or something, and they wanted to go look it up. What would that look like? And I'm specifically choosing an EIP that is in the past, like something that currently is the old type of EIP. Do we have any ideas of how we might be able to port those over somehow? So it yeah, makes I sense think, for someone to... I think the uh, the goal, sorry, I just uh, had a contractor come into my room. Um, <laughs> So I, I think the goal would be to have all of the old EIPs ported into the same format as the, the new EIPs. Um, for, for core EIP specifically, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. ERCs, you, you really can't represent in the same repository, so yeah. yeah. And so what, what, did, what do you imagine that would look like in, in your perfect world? Okay, so I think the way I'd want it organized is, um, so, it's hard to separate an EIP out from the fork it was in. Um, but I think you should be able to get a decent idea from the diff between the, the fork and the previous fork, which we generate, and the, the text document that describes the changes. Um, and that's probably how we're going to have to do it. Okay, so you're, you're thinking that along with each fork, there will be a text document that will describe the changes. And those uh, I think text documents each, would each EIP would have its own text document, and then each text document would have to describe what fork it belongs to. Oh, I see. So you would have uh, like an EIP one five one five one uh, document that described the change, and then would link to the diff where the change was included for the actual specification part. So that'll be a lot easier in future EIPs when we have the process formalized, but. For older ones, I think it's just going to have to be like all of the EIPs in a fork are in one diff because it's hard to maintain individual okay. diffs per EIP. Yeah. Like even maintaining diffs per fork is is <laughs> proven to be challenging, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I can actually show you, I think, what one of those looks like. Give me one sec. Let's do 
distribution specs, and we want something in Tangerine Whistle. What what was in Tangerine Whistle? That was the uh, DOS protection, if I remember correctly, right? No idea. Come on, you guys are supposed to be experts on this. <laughs> I'm a noob. I don't know anything before London. Yeah, okay, uh, so. before Berlin. Nothing before Berlin for me. So I'll put this in the chat here. So uh, this is, or actually, I can just share my screen. That's even better. Yeah. Oh, I cannot share my screen. So oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> just give me a, just give me a second. Let me check. Oh, it's, it's not your fault. It's mine. I'm in, I'm in Wayland, so I can't share my screen with Zoom. Um. But yeah, so you can actually take a look at like what those changes look like in the rendered documents. And this is something we're working on, you know, improving and making more readable, but it, I think it's coming along nicely. So if I understand correctly, the idea here is to have all the uh, earlier EIPs that went into one of the uh, uh, earlier forks to be documented in one there. And uh, for the upcoming EIPs, which are to be considered for upgrade, they will have their separate if. And they, in that, uh, other than the, um, the specs, there will be a separate T, uh, TXT file, which will contain other information, whether or not they go into the upgrade, like uh, it, it is a se separate thing, but we will have one uh, text document for every proposal that is being proposed for upcoming upgrades. Exactly, yeah. And then, like I, I kind of imagine the way it'll be developed for an upcoming fork will be every every EIP will be developed in its own branch, and then we'll be generating the documentation from all of those branches merged, so that you can kind of see what the next hard fork is going to look like. But then, when the actual uh, the actual hard fork is is decided and made, all of those things will be merged, and you'll be able to link to each commit where those EIPs were merged. Um, It definitely sound interesting and it will be more interesting to actually get this implemented. I understand like we are at the very early stages, but having this discussion, at least giving up a, a high level picture of what is being imagined here. Maybe in the upcoming meetings, we can uh, um, try to have something uh, documented and then think more about it and then see how it comes up to be. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds about right. Thank you. Thank you for that update. And uh, yeah, anyone has any question, comment before we move on to the next one? If not, we'll try to keep this item uh, like, if not uh, in every meeting, maybe in alternate meetings to at least uh, kind of reviving this so people should be aware of this this new process and the process that is being proposed even if it is not finalized uh, we can start collecting feedbacks and discuss feedbacks in these meetings to kind of formalize the process moving on uh, the next item is a uh, eip's insight uh, that's a monthly eip status reporting update uh, since the last update, uh, there is one new proposal added in the past two weeks, and now we have a total of four new EIPs in draft status. And um, there are three EIPs in the review status, EIP 4200, EIP 4626, and EIP 3668. Obviously, EIP 3668 is no more in review, but it is listed here in review status because it changed its status in the month of January itself for uh, that particular proposal that has now completed its last call and we should be expecting a pull request to move it to the final status very soon by the author. Uh, the last call period for um, three of the proposals which were earlier in the last call is now over. So ideally all the proposals are eligible to be moved to the final status. 3668 is one of them, and the other two proposals are EIP 3448 and EIP 3607. There is one additional proposal which is resurrected from the stagnant to review, and the number is EIP 2980, that is Swiss Compliant Asset Token. And there was already one proposal which were resurrected from the uh, stagnant status. Technically, we have like more than 
uh, three, we, we should have five uh, in the review status. But again, uh, one, one has uh, completed the last call, so only four left in the review status. There are four proposals which moved to stagnant because of part, they, they were inactive and there were a few minor edits to the final proposal. Please check out the EAPs inside for January to learn more about the EAPs activities. Yeah, uh, I see the comment from Micah and it is really good. These updates from Sam give, give everyone, not only Micah, hope for brighter future for a reason not to just live, just to be a part of this community as well. Thank you, Sam. Moving on, uh, the next item listed here is EIP Editor Apprenticeship Meeting. We had this meeting uh, yesterday. Uh, there were reviews on some of the poll requests which were submitted over the past two weeks. The highlight of the meetings, uh, including some of the poll requests, uh, those were discussed uh, yesterday. Uh, are added to the summary section, which is available in the comment to add the agenda to the meeting. Um, we can expect at least one more proposal moving to the final status, that is EIP 1271. It's, it's an old proposal and it's a big win for the team because this was a long due proposal to be moved into the final status. There were some edits and recommendation to other pull requests. Uh, um, one of those were EIP 2982, which is an informational EIP for uh, Serenity Phase 0. Um, please check out the video and the summary linked in the EIP EIP meeting agenda for uh, the details of the discussion happened in the EIP editor's apprenticeship meeting. And this meeting is bi-weekly, so we would be expecting the next one two weeks on Tuesday. That's mostly what were listed here on the agenda. And the last item is review action items from the previous meeting. So from the previous meeting, uh, as we can see, there are only two. Uh, Shashank will be working on documenting the EIP bot improvement. Uh, he is already working and we should be having something added to the maybe readme file or in a doc for new people to contribute to. And um, I did check with William and Triken and uh, Unfortunately, I did not receive any response yet, but uh, for some of the questions, those were asked in the earlier meeting. Uh, if we get any response, we'll try to add them in the upcoming meeting to address them, of course. And um, I'm also talking to um, EF um, DevOps team to finish the migration. It is still not done for the EIPV that we are discussing from past few meetings. Um, I will check back with the team one more time and let's see, we hope to have this uh, migration done to the Ethereum GitHub repository. I hope by the next meeting. <laughs> I don't know yet, I'm just waiting on the response. So that's all, um, anyone has anything to bring up? These EIP AP meetings, Seems to be a little shorter, but I think uh, we are trying to cover the basis on whatever is going on. And if anyone has any question, concern related to the process and they would like to be addressed. So if you are one and you want to contribute or if you have questions, please leave a comment to the agenda so we can pick it up and we can bring it to the next meeting. Well, thank you everyone for your time. Hope to see you guys around. In two weeks, we'll try to be on the same call. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks, Pooja and everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.